Sound Lancer Fatty, live for us. Thank you for that. Joining me now to talk more about Trump's prospects and the problems with Hispanic voters are Helena Aguirre Ferre, who's the director of Hispanic communications for the Republican National Committee, and GOP strategist and CNN political commentator Ana Navarro. Uh, welcome to the both of you. Helen, you were in the meeting, so you are that proverbial fly on the wall. Why is it that some folks, sources, I should say, are saying that it did seem like things might be changing on the Trump front when it comes to those uh, you know, 11 million undocumented workers and what's going to happen to them deportation-wise. Well, and then others say, no, they came out of that meeting completely confused and not knowing exactly what his policy was. Give me well, your Mr. take. Mr. Trump never said what his policy was going to be. Mr. Trump was very clear that he wanted to hear from the advisory board as to what they considered were important and, and what were the issues of concern for the community, which were others, by the way, aside from immigration like jobs, economy, and national security. But specifically, he was open to hearing what they wanted to say, and he never said the word legalization. He never said the word deportation. Quite frankly, out of all of the things that we talked about, it was the one area where he sat, listened, took notes, and didn't comment at all. So there is no way for any of us to know what he is going to do or say when it comes to immigration policy. But he was thoughtful in hearing everyone out. Well, so Anna Navarro, that's what we're hearing many of the people who um, have reported back from that meeting, that he was thoughtful and that he did ask a lot of questions, and that he asked people to put in writing what their recommendations were as well. And yet, when, when we reached out to you today, I love your response to one of our producers. It was, you don't get to use the Hispanic community as a pinata and come back and make nice. That's right. Look, I, he launched his campaign on the theme that Mexicans were rapists and criminals and bringing uh, crime over to the United States. He did say some of them were good. He has then gone on to make so many offensive statements. He questioned the ability of Judge Curiel, an American-born uh, citizen who is of Mexican heritage, to do his job as a judge because of his Mexican heritage. He told Jeb Bush to stop speaking Mexican. He said to Jeb Bush, you've got to love illegals because of your wife. He kicked out Jose Diaz Ballard and Jorge Ramos, the two leading network anchors from events, told Jorge Ramos to go back to Univision. I guess he forgot Univision is adjacent to his property at, uh, in Miami. So, you know, it's been a barrage, one after the other, of offensive, outrageous remarks. He's been kicking us like puppies for the I last have to say, year that has plus. Nothing to do with immigration reform. Listen, Helen I, let, Helen, I let you speak, and I'm old enough to remember when you used to tweet against Donald Trump. I'm old enough to remember when you used to be as offended as I am by the things Donald Trump used to say. I'm more that was before he was the nominee. That was before he Anna. was the, before Anna, you had you an RNC job. And you can be as job. offended as you want by Donald, what Donald Trump has said. I am more offended by what Hillary Clinton has done and what she hasn't done. And quite frankly, I'm offended that she panders to our community. I'm offended that Democrats take advantage of Hispanic votes and then do nothing with it. I'm offended that Hillary Clinton has flip-flopped numerous times on every aspect of immigration. And if we're going to talk about immigration reform and how to solve of immigration, we need, the, we need this kind of leadership to be able to bring it forward. Hillary Clinton has zero accomplishments. Donald Trump has many more accomplishments on the private sector. Can, can and quite I, frankly, if Hillary was in the private sector, she would have been fired. I do I will, I'll just, let me just say this. Well, Ashley, yeah. let, me, let me respond. Look, I have been very critical in the past of President Obama for not fulfilling his promise to Latinos. I have been critical of Democrats and Republicans using the immigration issue as a pawn issue, as a wedge issue. I have been critical of Hillary Clinton. She was the first voice to call for the immediate deportation of minors at the border. And I was one of the first voices to call her out for that. She has changed her tune. Now, I have never heard Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton, and frankly, most Republicans use the racist remarks and racist language that I have heard Donald Trump use for the last year. When you question a man's ability to do his job as a judge because of his heritage, that's called bigotry. I will, say this, question, I will say this, that many in those meetings, Anna, did say that they were as upset uh, with, uh, with President Obama's deportations over the last eight years as well, saying he has deported more than any president in the past. That said, this is the bigger question. Um, I feel as though if I were, you know, not here legally, um, I would be sitting on pins and needles wondering what the policy 
was going to be. And we're 78 days away. So, Helen, what, shouldn't we know by now what the immigration policy of, uh, of the Republican leader is? I mean, by this point, shouldn't we be well, real I clear? I think what should be clear is that we get the right policy in place more than put it on our timeline. And quite frankly, you know, when you look at the campaigns, traditionally campaigns don't really begin and people don't begin to focus on policy and details until right around this time or after Labor Day. But more than putting a timetable on it, you know, immigration is a very complex issue and there are a lot of moving parts. And so let's get it right and let's get a leader that's not going to pander, that's not going to promise and never commit to the promises. When we go all across the nation, we find people who are forever telling us that they're tired of professional politicians who continuously promise and then have no intention of fulfilling their promises. This is one area where I really do believe that Donald Trump is going to fulfill the promise, not the promise, he's going to commit to solving immigration reform and helping I do, I do Latinos feel like it's been 14 areas. months. It's been 14 months since he descended that escalator and talked about building a but wall. But he was in a primary. And, 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 well, it's been 14 months during running for the leadership of, uh, you know, to be the candidate where he's had ample time to actually craft a policy and communicate the policy. And he's we been don't working know the policy on this yet. But you know what? But Ashley, you will be hearing the policy soon enough. I hope so. And, and God, I hope thing. so. And yeah. you'll be hearing it soon enough. And I don't there know. There are a lot what of really nervous is, people out there. You Hispanic know? leaders talk about it. I, I think, well, and I listen, misspoke. I, I misspoke when I said if I were. Us. Hold on a second, Anna. I misspoke when I said if I were living here illegally, I'd be on pins and needles. I'm on pins and needles for all the people who are here. I, I don't want to see trains going through the U.S. loading people up and shipping them out in the darkness of night. I, I think that's just inhumane. And if this uh, leader wants to be humane, that is definitely a policy he's going to have to come to grips with. And I don't but know where that middle ground Ashley, is, but I hope we find it soon. But, but Ashley, there's pain on all sides of this issue. There's pain for those who are undocumented. Notwithstanding. Um, those, those are people yeah. also who live on the border and who have had to deal with the crime Without on the borders. Without question. That, it's why it's not an easy well. issue. It's, it's not. Uh, you're, you're, you're spot on. Uh, Helen, thank you so much. Anna, thank you very much. Thank you. It is a painful topic.